Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Bunch from Intermountain Heart Rhythm, or Heart Institute in Salt Lake City, Utah, here at the American Heart Association 2015 meetings. I'm here with Dr. Jonathan Duke, who was initially at uh, the University of San Francisco and recently joined a team at, uh, in San, Santa Barbara. And I, we're here to talk about his very interesting research involving the effects of alcohol on the heart, on mortality and atrial fibrillation. Dr. Duke, can you tell me something about this? Yeah, so we um, uh, so we're presenting today a very we think a very exciting study uh, looking at the uh, Texas Healthcare Inpatient Database. It's an age cup database that takes all healthcare admissions uh, from 2005 to 2009 in the state of Texas. And the reason we use this database it allows us to uh, take advantage of the fact that in Texas is the large Texas is the largest state to have um, wet and dry laws. So there are states that completely, uh, there are counties in that state that completely prohibit all alcohol sales and other counties that have no, uh, no uh, prohibition. And this study is the first study to look at the public health effects of these laws. Um, no other prior study has been able to, uh, has, has, looked, has looked at any, any, any cardiovascular or any heart outcomes uh, in, in this database. So what we've done is uh, compared uh, both the uh, acute MI rates, the acute CHF rates, and the, uh, and the acute uh, atrial fibrillation incident and prevalence rates uh, between the wet and dry counties. And we found some really interesting findings. One, we found that, um, that the acute MI rates and the, and the incident CHF rates are lower in, the, in wet counties, in counties that have no pro alcohol prohibitions. Uh, while atrial fibrillation rate, incident rates are actually higher in counties that have no prohibitions. Uh, this goes with uh, previous thoughts that alcohol can be protective against coronary artery disease, but also uh, gives, gives a fair, we believe to be strong evidence that alcohol actually does have an effect on incident atrial fibrillation. The same effects we also saw with the prevalence rates uh, with these admissions. We had over, um, over 1.6 million patients that we found in hospital admissions between these two, uh, between these two groups of counties. So this gives us the power to answer some very interesting questions. That's fascinating. So it does confirm the higher risk of atrial fibrillation, which we've seen. And I think when we look at age, there's really not a, a certain amount of drinking limit that may be helpful. Or, in other words, we see risk of atrial fibrillation even with a few drinks. Is that what you have found? Uh, well, unfortunately, since it's, it's a hospital admission database and we're just stratifying patients on, on by by county, we can't tell, uh, we can't de we can't determine what the quantity of alcohol is that the patients are using. We can only determine that limita limitations in the sale of alcohol appear to have effect on public health outcomes: less MIs, less CHF, but more atrial fibrillation. One question that people often ask is how do we know that people aren't just uh, trucking alcohol in and buying it out of county and bringing it in? Well, we looked actually at uh, alcohol intoxication emission rates in those, in those counties as well as acute alcoholic hepatitis. And in counties that had limitations with alcohol use, we saw much lower rates of alcohol intoxication emissions in the hospital and much lower rates of uh, alcoholic hepatitis, suggesting that the amount of alcohol they were drinking actually was less. But beyond, but for exact quantities of alcohol, it's unfortunately we weren't able to determine that. That's fantastic. That's excellent research. And thank you for sharing that no, research with my us. My pleasure. Today.